Hello, I hope everyone is doing wonderful. And it's Jennifer here with Divine Threefold. And welcome back to Symptoms of Menopause Part Two. Um, I hopefully you enjoyed the last video. I am going to get straight to it for this video. Um, I feel like I definitely rambled too much in the last video, and a couple of people definitely let me know that. So thank you. Um, I didn't mean to ramble, but I did feel like I rambled only because I was trying to share a little bit of a backstory. So I apologize if that just wasn't working for some. Uh, so in this part two, let me do a recap. Last video, I spoke about sleep and my cycles getting really close together were my first two sort of symptoms. Um, and I talked about a lot of other stuff, but I'm not gonna do that today. So today I want to discuss, uh, I left off with the sleep and my sleep is still my biggest struggle. And please put in the comments down below if this also, I know I've t I spoke to a couple women that said, yes, sleep is the most difficult and sleep just makes everything compounded and worse because if you're not sleeping, then you feel like crap and it just keeps going and going and going. So that has been a struggle. But again, movement and meditation is really what ends up saving me. So I'm going to keep promoting that to you. And um, let me, let's, okay, so recap the sleep. I'm taking everything, I have tried everything you can imagine. I haven't found, you know, really something uh, that works. Certain things will work sometimes, but every night is different. So again, let me know if you are there too. So today I want to talk about another symptom that came up this last year and I definitely, this was huge. So I started to bleed and my period just came and never went away. And I just kept bleeding. This was the heaviest bleed I've ever had, even more than childbirth and any of my four births. I mean, it was so heavy and it would not stop. And so it just kept going and going. The blood, I literally bled for six weeks. Um, I couldn't go anywhere. I was stuck in the house. I bled all over the house, the carpet, you name it. I bled all over it. It was horrible. I couldn't leave the house. I was stuck. No woman device worked. Um, maybe I'm talking the plus of size of everything. I would layer pads, put tampon in. I mean, nothing worked, you guys. I tried the Diva Cup. I just kept bleeding. It was horrible. I was horribly fatigued. Uh, and then I started to notice every time I stood up, I literally was going to pass out. And I was really got concerned because I had never seen this much blood. So I literally at that point pretty was positive that I was dying. <laughs> and no, not really, but kind of. I mean, you really are like, what is happening? And I really was hopeful that, oh my gosh, I'm gonna bleed almost to death and then it will be gone. And then that was it, that was menopause. But no. So I ended up having, ended up in the emergency room because I literally thought I was just, you know, I, every time I stood up, I would be dizzy. I was so tired. Um, so yeah, it, I knew that something wasn't right. So I went to the emergency room because um, I didn't know what else to do. I called the doctor and the doctor was like, well, how much blood and da 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 da. And so anyways, I just felt the, you know, the instinct that I needed to go to the emergency room. So my daughter actually took me to the emergency room. And um, of course I was anemic from losing so much blood. Um, they did ultrasound, pelvic exam, everything you can imagine. Didn't really find any reason why I was hemorrhaging, which was good. So it wasn't, you know, another sort of problem. I do have two small fibroids and they thought maybe a cyst, but those had been there. I knew the fibroids had been there. So those can have you heavily bleed, 
but that wasn't the case. So I ended up following up with my, uh, I got a referral for an OBGYN. And so I went to the OBGYN. Um, they ended up prescribing me progesterone to stop the bleeding. And it took a couple days, but after a couple days, it settled down the bleeding. And um, also they gave me iron because I was anemic. And that makes sense why I was um, so dizzy every time I stood up and so fatigued. So that was what they gave me. And then I went to an OBGYN that I was referred to and <sighs> horrible situation again. So as you guys are going to start to see, I've had really bad luck with um, the doctors and the care that I have experienced. So, and again, this is my experience. I want to make that clear. I think also some people felt like I wasn't talking about my experience, but this is my experience. And I know every woman is going to experience menopause, perimenopause, postmenopause very differently. We're not going to, no two are going to be alike. So that is just how it is. But there's a lot of things that we will all experience. And there's some things that you will not experience and I will experience. So um, the OBGYN was a male and um, I have no problem with a male or a female doctor. Um, so I went into the doctors and, you know, I was pretty much in tears. I mean, I was still bleeding and just, you know, it was making me feel so bad. So the first thing he says to me was, you know, I was kind of upset and crying and he says, yeah, I'm really sorry. You should have been born with testicles. I literally burst into more tears. I could not believe that he would say that to me. It was shocking. So I immediately left. He was going to do an exam. I literally told them I'm not feeling well. I'm going to go. And I literally left. And I called later and complained and said I thought that was very rude, it was mean, and just uncalled for. Oh, he also told me that he gave, you know, he gave me a different type of progesterone than the hospital had prescribed me, and he said, oh, and sorry, it's going to make you really bitchy. Excuse my French. So, yeah, so this was really upsetting, and that was my experience with um, another doctor. So, so yes, I wonder if anyone, please leave in the comments, if you've experienced a bleed like this, that continued also for me. So that was six weeks. Then it, like I got maybe four, five, six, another six weeks with nothing. And then it started again. So then I, again, just had to start taking the progesterone to stop the bleeding. So this continues to go on. Um, yeah, it's awful, awful. So that was that. Um, I also want to go back to talking about, um, I also feel that someone, I received some comments of people maybe feeling like I was labeling women to say, that all women dislike their husbands at PMS time. And that is not what I said, but I felt it really bothered me because first of all, it's not what I said and it was hurtful and it was also very unsupportive. So I want to just say it again, that that is not what I said. I said that I dislike my husband and always have struggled with that with PMS. And um, since I've been going through the perimenopause, it got worse. And what I was explaining in the video was I did say that I dislike my husband. And then I also said, it, maybe some of you women can relate is what was said. So I really just feel the calling to clarify that and address it because I want, I'm trying to hold space here for women to come and feel so supported to not feel alone and that was not what I expected. And yeah, I, I, I just, I, I feel like that wasn't called for and 
you know, I was talking about my experience and no way, shape or form was I saying that all women feel this way. Now, I know myself, many women who struggle with this, with not getting along with our loved ones, period, whether that's a mother or your sister or your spouse. So, and I wanted to say that I was sharing this because this was traumatic. Remember, if you did watch the video, then you would hear that I went to the doctors because I was so upset that I was feeling this way. And I'm used to my husband kind of driving me crazy and rubbing me the wrong way around my periods. But then all this, but that would go away once I would start to bleed and I would be fine. So this was very upsetting when this continued. And this is why I went to the doctor. I didn't want to feel that way. I love my husband and it was horrible to feel that way. It was horrible to feel that you know, I didn't want to even be around him. I didn't want him to comfort me. I, everything he did was wrong. Everything he said was wrong. And this, this was horrible. So let me reiterate that. Um, that was not pleasant. So maybe I kind of laughed at it a little bit in the previous video, but remember I was going to a doctor to reach out, like help me. I don't want to feel this way. So that was not a good feeling. Um, and I shared also that doctor just literally saying that I was depressed and he prescribed me uh, antidepressant. So this is what I'm trying to share because I want the awareness to be there that we are not getting the right support or the right resources or even the right doctors that can really help us through this. And that's what we need from each other. So we must turn to each other and unite as women and stand together. And uh, yes, I am not against the males and I hope all the males are here because I want you to learn and see exactly and try and understand what we're going through as well. So again, I just really felt the calling to address that and let you know that that was horrible. And also with my husband, maybe some women can relate. I've also experienced that even um, touch uh, is very difficult. Like I am can be highly irritable and that has continued and gotten worse to where I don't even want him to touch me. And that's a horrible feeling. And my poor husband, he does not understand. And it's very difficult for him to even understand. I don't understand. So it's so hard for me to even explain to him. So this has been a really tough thing and it's been tough on our marriage. And I think that a lot of marriages go through trouble when the, you know, when us women are going through or starting this chapter, this change in our lives. So uh, please put in the comments down below if this was also difficult for you. I would love your feedback because it's it's been so upsetting for me and for my husband. So I'm going to leave with that. I don't want to continue to ramble, but I hope that we can all support. I'm trying to hold this space here on my channel. So maybe just even one woman has a place to come and not feel alone and feel like she has 100% support. And that's what I want for you, for as many women as I can and men. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. All my love.